when he says he was in the spirit and then he heard a voice that said to him come up here when heaven is calling you the experience is not in human language the experience is in a groaning it means that the volcano of your spirit man has been unleashed and if you know this feeling even if you are in a board meeting excuse yourself and go to the toilet because you will need to cooperate with you see this oh my god you're not with me now now stay 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 the bible says it is god that walketh in us but to will and to do of his good pleasure so next verse now says walk out your salvation with fear and what and trembling the reason why he's asking you to walk it out is because something is being walked in the holy spirit is walking something in and it will be your responsibility to partner with him so that you can walk it out so you excuse yourself from the board meeting and you run into the toilet because he's walking out the protocol of a groaning huh. you will need to yield so that you can walk out that which he's walking in are you there the moment he begins to walk it out then the sermon becomes consummated you can begin to see visions of heaven that's a pathway to visions i know when visions are coming because it, it, it starts like a groaning in your spirit and if you can identify it and you decide to walk it out what is being walked in will be consummated in your alignment with it and response to it it will get to a level where the transportation god was hoping to send you through will be accomplished then you come into the realm of visions and encounters so when the bible says that he he What's the word he used again he was moved deeply in his spirit stenazo it was actually a body for prayer that was coming on him. and the moment he's walked in what's the protocol you walk it out if you refuse to walk it out you have quenched the spirit and there is a place he wanted to take you to so that he could whisper to you and show you greater mighty things that you are not aware of you just truncated that trip you refuse to board the plane that will take you to the next station are you there and sometimes when it comes like that he only comes once and if you miss it that time he will never come again for that same issue the the armor he was hoping to bequeath to you so as to survive the wave of darkness that is coming in the next two weeks you forfeited it because you refused to ascend and then when satan comes in two weeks time you are not equipped to engage him and satan now his attack on your life takes you light years behind I've seen people like that in that oscillatory motion they take three steps forward and then and then there was an emergency God want, began to walk something in and because they could not recognize that it is God that is at work in them they despise that walking Satan came again and set them back two steps forward five steps backward two steps forward five steps backward but when the ladder came when the elevator came you refused to board it everybody was heading to the fourth floor <laughs> you are still on ground floor please help me tell your neighbor come up here God wanted to to give John some insights but he will not give him on ground floor he told him board and come up and many times God wants to take you away from the boardroom he wants to take you away from the deceptive Pharisees that are trying to tempt you he wants you to come up here dissociate disconnect so that you can yield and work out the things that have been worked in but most believers are not sensitive to understand this protocol 
So the first alphabet I would like you to understand today is tenazo, which is the, kind, the experience of what it means when God begins to accumulate a prayer burden upon your heart. And when that thing comes, it doesn't come every day, but when it comes, do everything possible. If you're on the highway driving, just, just, just try to park, park, and make sure that moment you walk out that which has been walked into you. Are you there? God will always give you a sign. He will always give you a sign. Always. He will never allow you walk in blindness and in darkness. If you are still with me, say, Amen. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. 
Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.